It's time for another conversation with an outstanding alumna of WKU Volleyball in another edition of the Alumni Spotlight, presented by Alumni Hall, the official online store of WKU Athletics. I'm Brett Williams, and this weekend I'm joined by the three-time All-American middle blocker of the class of 2019, Rachel Anderson. How are you doing today, Rachel? Good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Excited to talk to you today. A lot of great stories I know to tell, and it starts with your career here on the Hill. I mentioned three-time All-American, three-time first-team All-Conference USA, two-time tournament MVP in CUSA. You won six out of a possible eight titles with the Hilltoppers, got to two second rounds in the NCAA tournament. How do you boil all that down to some of your favorite memories here during your four years? Um, I mean, I think a lot of it just comes down to the people that surrounded me. Like, yes, all of these amazing things that happen with our team year to year on the court, but I think a lot of it um, was because of the, the off-court relationships and just the laughter, the fun times that we had um, that kind of made the volleyball part worth it and be so successful. So. Well, earlier this season, I had a chance to talk with Jess Lucas, and I asked her this. I'll ask you the same thing. You were part of those teams that became so beloved uh, from Hilltopper Nation, did so much not only on the floor but off the floor, as you mentioned, for this program and for this community. What was it like to be a part of, of that group and going through the journey uh, with that group of young women? It was definitely, like, transforming just – Personally, seeing where I was my freshman year to senior year, um, I think every year the leaders that we had on our team um, helped me become a better leader and get got me out of my shell. Um, and just the awesome community, like we would have, you know, as many fans as we could on Sunday games, um, after the game, like they'd just be so proud of us. We'd be out in the community. Um, just like shopping or getting food and people would stop and just have long conversations with us just to, you know, tell us how proud they were. And um, that just has a lot to do with the program that, you know, Travis built and um, continues to build. So. And then individually you've, you're all over the record books for this program. And one of the particular ways in a single match, you had 31 kills tied for the all-time program high, and that was in the 2016 Conference USA Championship at Rice, another five-set thriller in Houston that the Hilltoppers got the better of the Owls in. Uh, what stands out to you when you look back on, on that individual match, both for what it was for you and then for your team, obviously, finding a way to, to get to the top of the conference yet again? I just remember how intense it was, and both – sides of the court just kept pushing there wasn't like you know we just went in there and swept them no they were ready they you know did all their scouting reports they knew what we were and you know we we found a way to pull it off and I honestly didn't know that record <laughs> so like hearing that is kind of like um, it's really cool that you know I I would have never imagined um, going into college me being capable of doing that and like I said it just it goes back to you know our coaches and the time that they commit into each player to bring out their best they're not like okay you came in freshman year you know you won state and whatever from your hometown um, but you're going to be better you're going to continue to grow season after season um, and people see that like one year you would come back and they'd be like, oh my goodness, they stepped up and now they're a lead scorer. So um, I think that's, it comes back to, you know, the culture and just the, the hard training outside of season. So You mentioned uh, not necessarily knowing about those records. I'll give you a few more. Your sixth all-time in kills, second all-time in hitting percentage for your career here, and third all-time in total blocks. Any of those in particular uh, you're most proud of? Um, definitely the blocks. I've, I've always, like, even when I was younger, I told people I'm a middle hitter, not a middle blocker. Like, that's what middles are known for. They're known to be blockers. And I, I just love to hit. I just wanted to hit. Give me the ball. I want to score. But 
I realized, you know, in college, everyone, everyone's good. Everyone can hit. So um, I did, I worked a lot. Um, the coaches helped me a lot. Um, so that one is very, very, it's good to hear that. Still number three. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's interesting because I know I introduced you as a middle blocker at the top of this. So as you started, I said, well, maybe I should change to middle hitter. But uh, I guess no. middle blocker is uh, just as appropriate. Yeah, I know it's fine. I, I, it's part of my game. So, yeah. Rachel, you were one of the recipients, one of several that WKU Volleyball has enjoyed. I talked with Emma Kowalski about this earlier this season. You were a recipient of the Jim Castaneda Postgraduate Scholarship from Conference USA. What did that look like for you once you left the Hill? Um, so when I graduated or before I graduated, I wasn't quite sure what my next step was going to be. And I have a feeling a lot of, you know, college students go through that. Um, and I think it was, um, I think I talked to Christy about, um, going to grad school and kind of how that would look like, would I stay on campus, would it be online, stuff like that. And she mentioned this scholarship and I was like, yep, I need to apply. Um, and it, it was just, it helped me be a little more relaxed going through grad school, knowing that I had that extra support. Um, and yeah, it was, it was amazing that, that is available to student athletes. So, and again, a great tradition for WKU volleyball, uh, being the program that's brought that home uh, almost seemingly every year. So congrats to you on that. And speaking about your postgraduate efforts, you've gone pro with this game, which is something that we always love to see, uh, been overseas for the last couple of years. Tell me a little bit about your journey in the, in the pro ranks. Um, it's been a journey. Um, never thought that this would be something that I was going to do because I really didn't know much about it. I feel like playing professionally overseas, playing volleyball isn't really talked about that much. So I didn't know about it until the end of my senior year. So it was kind of like a last minute decision. I was like, yep, doing it. Um, so my first year, I came over here to try out. And while I was trying out, I got picked up by a team. And that was 2020, so the beginning of 2020. Um, I was here for three months and then COVID hit, had to rush back home um, because like borders were closing. Um, it was a little, a little hectic for um, a few months, but things got better um, and then I got picked up by a team in it's called Neuwied, Germany which is my I'm here for a second season um, we won our league last year we were nice. in the second this Liga um, we only lost one game all season mm. we play from August to um, April so it's a very wow. long season um, that's, that's putting together that, WKU numbers right there, going that whole stretch and lo only losing a match. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different kind of tough compared to um, college volleyball, like the schedule. Um, and then I was asked to come back here and sign again with the same team, and we moved up to the first league. So um, it's one of the top probably six leagues in Europe, wow. most competitive. Um, and so far it has been very competitive and, um, yeah. How would you say your time here prepared you for that grind that you're going through? Uh, so in so many ways, I just off the court because I, I have a lot of free time. Um, like during the day we practice in the morning and at night. So during the day I can have some free time and I didn't have that in college. So, um, I think... I'm learning to have good time management and to find some things to fill my day. Um, there's, so physio is a little different here. Um, we don't have um, as many tools and um, people helping us. So I've had to do a lot of my own kind of physio rolling out nutrition like I still have to you know get on top of those things but it's all kind of on me um and then just yeah the volleyball side of things I would 
not be here if it weren't for my teammates, coaches, going to Western Kentucky. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just crazy how like fast forward, I'm looking back and like, wow, I remember like specific moments that's helping me right now. So it's really cool to see. And I'm just very thankful for my time on the Hill. Well, that's awesome. We certainly wish you all the best uh, this season. Hope it's just as successful as, as last year was and um, can't wait to see what the future has in store for you both on and off the floor. I want to ask one more question about this team this year. You had a chance to be a part of, uh, be teammates with some of the players who are still here uh, in your senior year when they were freshmen. Seen obviously what this program has continued to do uh, since you left, just taking it through you know tremendous golden years yet again, a golden years round two essentially after after your stretch here. What would be your message to them right now as they try to keep this thing rolling forward? Some of these fifth year players wrapping up their career. What would you say to them? I would just say enjoy every moment, but don't let up keep the foot on the gas, keep pushing, keep trying to get, you know, that next award, that next point, that next everything. Like, I think if I could rewind, I would just because it was so fun. Um, but just to, you know, take advantage of the now because it's going to be over sooner than what they think. So, yeah. Rachel Anderson, our guest today on the Alumni Spotlight. Really enjoyed catching up with you, Rachel. Again, we wish you all the best, and thanks a lot for reconnecting the Hilltopper Nation. Thanks for having me.